Okay. By the by the examining court in certain circumstances. But I think the language that comes out of not only the majority opinion but also the concurrences is that the machine or transformation test is a useful test and is still indicative of patent eligibility. And I think that's one thing that uh, we should rely on. Um, and that sort of leads us into our what's next. Uh, we spoke a little bit about the revised PTO guidelines. Um, these were prepared yesterday, but obviously the abstract idea rejection uh, didn't simply take the place of, of rejections in the sense that the examiners are still going to use the machine or transformation test, uh, but they are going to be incorporating this abstract idea component of it uh, much more frequently. Now, it's my understanding in asking this question to uh, to Director Capos several months ago at the University of Akron Intellectual Property Conference that the PTO is going to issue these draft guidelines for comment. Have you heard that? In, in other words, they will be issued for comment before they become uh, the, the practice uh, of the examining court. Have you heard that through your channels? Um, in the PTO guidelines that were issued, they mentioned that they were going to be working on a, a another um, more permanent set of guidelines for the examiners. But do you think they're going to allow for the public to be able to provide input? I, I certainly hope so. The, um, I, I think that practitioners uh, provide a, um, a significant input and, and can help the patent office. And, and I think they would probably ask practitioners for input. Now, let's go to the medical diagnostic arena, which is watching this decision with bated breath, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the Supreme Court, in effect, in this Prometheus case, is going to remand it uh, to the Federal Circuit in light of this decision? You know, I think that would be a very easy disposition of the Prometheus case. Certification, or a petition for, for cert was requested many months ago, and it was initially distributed to the justices for conference back in January. And then six months went by without any word coming down from the court about whether or not cert would be granted. Uh, just this past Friday, the petition was um, distributed again for them to have a conference on uh, actually as of yesterday. So hopefully we'll be hearing some information soon about uh, the Prometheus case. Certainly, since Prometheus was decided on a machine or transformation test, uh, they could remand it. Um, Prometheus was actually found to, uh, the, the claim was found to have met the machine or transformation test and was considered patent eligible. So I don't see how the Bilski claim, or how the Bilski decision, since it sort of broadens um, the, the world, if you will, of what's considered patent eligible, I don't think it would change that in any way. Um, on the other hand, the Supreme Court might decide to take the Prometheus case um, and hear argument on it just so that they can give us information about 101 from a different technology. Uh, the Bilski decision uh, was very much steeped in uh, business methods, and I think from a diagnostic perspective, uh, they could then take that case and, uh, and, choose and, and decide Prometheus to help out diagnostic uh, method techniques, you know, at least just to give them some certainty. Well, one of our one of our participants notes that both the Prometheus and the um, hmm. the this other Clayton case have been sent back to the Federal Circuit. Okay. Okay. So so one of the um, one of the points that uh, I wanted to raise to the group is that our new chief judge of the Federal Circuit, Judge Rader, uh, was very outspoken in his uh, opinion uh, in the original Bilski case, and he is a very proactive judge, and it will be interesting to see what type of leadership, if you will, he will take in coming up with additional tests on patent eligibility uh, so that, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the patent office uh, and the Federal Circuit grapple with these new tests, uh, particularly with, with Chief Judge Rader at the helm. Uh, one of our other participants uh, noted that, uh, that we should be able to 
uh, get notice and comment right here. Uh, we will see what happens with this. Uh, if we do get notice or comment, we, we plan to run another webinar as soon as this is published, uh, as soon as the new guidelines are published to e elicit uh, additional input that perhaps could be provided to the PTO on this most important subject, as well as any other major decisions coming down on this as we see how this case really plays out in practice. But we're coming to uh, the point of completion of this first webinar, post bill ski webinar. Uh, we, again, thank each of you for being part of this. Uh, please send us emails if you have specific points that you would like us to address in the next one of these, or if you would like to make sure that you are notified of the next one of these. And last but not least, um, your input would be greatly appreciated from our side because we're trying to prognosticate, if you will, how this is really going to play out in practice. I myself have significant concerns because I think, unfortunately, the burden has been placed on applicants uh, to essentially write the law. And I think many applicants are not going to be able to afford to do that. And essentially, what we're going to do is hand the keys to these new tests over to the BPAI, and they're going to write the law uh, for us, uh, regardless of whether they have guidelines or not. So thank you all very much for attending our seminar. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. And we appreciate uh, this opportunity today.